fighter and the kids and Malik is a liar. Malik is, uh, you know, negative. Malik is the butt of the joke. No, I, I know how to play off comedy, you know, but, you know, when they get out there and just say, like, Malik got fired and they put that in people's heads, it's not what I, and not, it's not what yeah. I'm down. So, you know, and, and here's the thing, bro. I, I'm a professional at all times. You know, even with the, you go back to the clip where I said, I talked to PBC, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, and, and, and Brennan didn't believe me. You know, like I'm lying or something like that. I just <laughs> in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I got this motherfucker here, Malik B, sitting like a three year old <laughs> <laughs> on like, this chair. This is a, this is where you guys sitting in the line, boy, girl, boy, girl. Your teacher, come. all right, Malik, come on. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get <laughs> sit right back down. I don't even remember this. My legs. When, when's the last time you sat fucking crisscross applesauce? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Duck Duck Goose. I don't yeah, know, man. Even in Duck Duck Goose, you had to sit down. Oh man. Oh, hey, bro, I man, good. I haven't seen you what in like about a month or so. A month, man. I it's... got my legs out. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're gonna say something. No, nah, man. It's just funny because like back in the day, I remember when we were kids. Like anybody who wore shorts above their kneecaps, they were either called gay. Go ahead. They got yep. the ass beat. Yep. And now that's the shit. It's the shit now, <laughs> bro. These not even shorts. These are like shrimp swimming trunks. I'm like. <laughs> I was like, how high can I go? <laughs> hey, man. Look, it's funny because yeah. so I, uh, if you guys don't know, I, I came in a feature on The Fire and the Kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I, I definitely click with you a lot. You know, we Appreciate came it. on. I came on the Cutting Weight podcast. If you haven't checked Thank that you. out, she's fucking dope. Um, yeah. And it's weird, too. I feel like sometimes when you meet people like you don't you don't really know who they are. Right. But then sometimes when you're kind of cut from the same cloth, you have a conversation. And it's like, oh, I, I could fuck with this guy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I felt like with you, I was like, yo, I got to get this dude on the podcast and kind of hear your story because when I was on the fire and the kid, I didn't get to hear shit from you. <laughs> like you never, you you never spoke on that fucking podcast. <laughs> I, was, I was in there like fucking get out. I was like, hey. <laughs> I mean, look, people are people are gonna ask either way. So it's yeah. like as of right now, like I didn't bring uh, Malik on the podcast to talk about this, but you you know everybody wants to know. Obviously, you're not on the fire and the kid anymore, nah, right? Nah. Uh, something happened in between. Whatever you want to talk about and keep it comfortable, but obviously there was a there was a split. People are blowing up my shit. It's like, oh, you're gonna have Malik on. You gotta ask him about stuff. But uh, so so what's going on with that? <laughs> he texted me. He was like, bro, what the hell is going? Yeah, on? I was like, like why night. is everybody blowing up my shit? Dude? <laughs> nah, um, but just get into it. Um, it wasn't a firing. It was just a departure. Yeah, okay, you know, and and it it was some you know something that you know. Brittany wanted me to agree to it, and I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't want like those terms. You okay. know, I'm not about to do anything. I don't do anything for money. You know, I have principles. I have value. So, um, basically, to get in gist of it, it's just like, look, man, like I'm just trying to revamp my name. You know, like I get on Fighter and the Kids, and Malik is a liar. Malik is a uh, you know negative. Malik is the butt of the joke. No, I, I know how to play off comedy. You know, but. You know, when they get out there and just say, like, Malik got fired and they put that in people's heads, it's not what happened. And not, that's not what yeah. went down. So, you know, and, and here's the thing, bro. I, I'm a professional at all times. You know, even with the, you go back to the clip where I said, I talked to PBC, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, and, and, and Brennan didn't believe me, you know, like I'm lying or something like that. I just stayed focused and started laughing because I was like, man, look at this dude. Yeah, <laughs> and it comes out that PBC talked. I talk to PBC all the time. Yeah, to people that know, that's a boxing. That's what Al Heyman. I mm -hmm. come from that world, you know. And um, just just the whole gist of it is just like, man, you know, it, it, it's <laughs> you know that that you're talking about. So you know, for me, people are sending me this stuff, right? They send it to you. Yeah, they sent me this clip, and I it's, it's, I think it's the clip that you're talking about, right? It's what? like. If you guys don't watch the fire and the kid, right? So I've I've watched a lot of Brendan Shop stuff. Like I've I've seen him on Joe Rogan shit. I love them on Joe Rogan and everything else. But there's this there's this constant trope on the fire and the kid where people like to clown on Brendan a lot. And so they sent me this clip of you. It was it was a discrepancy between you guys talking about whether it was something was pay per view or not. That's PBC. Uh, yeah. It's PBC, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was he was saying that it wasn't. And then you're saying it is. And then <laughs> they just zoomed it on his face. He looked pissed off as fuck or something. I don't know what that was. Oh, that shit made me laugh. I was like, damn, dude, like people really go in on this guy, man. They I don't really know. go in on Brendan, man. They send me clips all the time, but I was like, you know, it, it's uh it's very funny. But but I don't want to talk about that. I just want to talk about like you know the the stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And I'll and I'll address more about it on the podcast because I can say whatever I want. Mm -hmm. You know, and um 
I didn't want to sign those agreements. I don't, I'm not a yes man. I don't, I don't really dictate my future or my career on somebody else's terms. Okay. So I, I rather bet on myself. I stand up on my man. I don't live on my knees. Yeah. You know, and um, basically you, you, you let's, I have texts from him and in the middle of the night, I'll be like, yo, he, you know, he texts me, I'm off tour. Like, damn, I prepared all week for, <laughs> you know, this show. Mm-hmm. And then on Monday, you text me, I see you, you know, face to face. And I, I, if I have any issue, I tell everyone knows my rep, I say it to your face. I'm like, bro, I have a, I have a problem with you. You know, as a man, that's how I was conduct myself. That's how I was raised. Mm-hmm. I talk to people. With, if I have an issue, I talk to, you know, straight directly towards you. I don't do over text. I don't do over the phone. I don't do none of that. So that's what the code I live by. And that's what okay. I stand for. So, you know, <clears throat> it's just, just so much stuff I can just say and I will say. But right now, I just I'm not on Fighter and the Kids because okay. I didn't want to agree to those kind of terms that he set. And I'm like, some people can. I don't, you know, and that's them. Was, was, so it, was it kind of like because you didn't want to agree to these terms, did that, did that sour the relationship? Or was it like sour before and this was like the kind of the, the straw that broke the camel's hump? Because, you know, we, people don't know stuff behind scenes, right? We don't know what real friendships are. We don't know what these personal relationships. And even for me, I'm not going to say anything bad about Brendan because I don't know Brendan like that. You know, like that's that's not, I can't, I, I don't know him, right? So this is just a story that I'm hearing and this is just going to be one side of the story. But for you guys, for, for you anyways, like... For I mean, this is it for me. Like it kind of sucks when I see like relationships break from something that could be very uh, fruitful, right? And it happens a lot in industry, where sometimes things get like business and friendship always gets mixed up, and it makes me sad sometimes when I see that because it's like a lot of people have this thing. It's called scarcity mentality, where everybody doesn't. For some reason, people don't believe that everybody can eat. Like everybody can eat. Just because I'm doing well doesn't mean you can't do well either. And sometimes when it happens with like a group of friends or or not saying that this is the fighter and the kids, but people who come into entertainment and do things for fun. When money gets involved, sometimes shit gets a little funny yeah. because people start to feel entitled to their certain success. And for me personally, when I when I've worked with all my friends, I've the only time I've ever had a bad business dealing is when I went to business with people who weren't friends, which is kind of crazy because people usually tell you the opposite. Yeah. Like don't ever do business with friends. But the people that I've done business with, I've been friends with 10 years. I've never had a single problem with them. We now have a a uh, successful matcha franchise. We're we're opening our we opened up our fourth store. We have another one opening up real soon. We have we have four more opening up within this year, and never had a problem an issue with that. And I think the biggest thing that I found out too was the people that you work with too. You really do have to be cut from the same cloth. These dudes that I roll with, if, if when we talk about our background, how we grew up, where we're from, the shit that we dealt with, it's all the same. We dealt with fucking. Being broke as fuck, yeah. having our parents beat our fucking ass. <laughs> there was co- there was consequences for lying. There was cl- consequences for snitching. Yeah. And so for us, because we live by the same code, we never had to re up on what these values are. It's like, yo, I know for a fact that this dude will always have my back, right? So for example, let's say, um, and we were talking about this earlier, how sometimes in this city, people don't live by the same code that you and I probably live with, right? And I've I've gotten to understand that because. Majority of people, when they come to Los Angeles, they're expecting for a come up and they'll do whatever they can, whether they have to step on somebody's neck or back to get to that spot. It doesn't matter what, 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 what the relationship is. If you fuck with my bread, then you're fucking out. I don't really function like that because I, I come up with like, hey, if I come up, you got to come up with me because if not, then what's the whole point of being on top and being by yourself? Mm-hmm. Being on top and being alone sucks. When your friends come up with you, it feels really good. That's why I started these businesses with people. So, if, for example, let's say you and I, like years from now, you and I are fucking tight. We're friends. I hear somebody coming out and they go, hey, yo, I heard Malik does this and that. I'm like, don't talk to me about that shit. That's my boy. So, you know, whatever you have feelings about him, I understand. You could talk about it, but don't talk to me about it. We could still be cool, but you can't talk about my boy. A lot of people don't function like that in this city. <laughs> and that's so weird. And that's so weird. Yeah. And, and again... Well, I, I met a couple of people out here, and you're right. But in, I say I say in this industry, yeah, you know, um, yeah, don't. definitely, like in the industry, like yeah. the entertainment, yeah. exact entertainment, of course. Because let's be honest, we know a lot of people will do anything for money, for yeah. success or fame, and they will lose their principle and their values. And I wasn't cut like that, and I, I will, it will hurt, it will burn if I, you know, don't stand on my word or don't 
be a man of my word or just stand on my own ten toes and just like, no, this is not right. Mm-hmm. And I, I accept that. No. And and for the listeners and the viewers, <clears throat> this is not a bashing a Brendan Shaw. It's yeah. not. It's trying to tell you like Malik is like I'm, I tell the truth all the time. And if and if he feel like oh he can go bash me and all that, I tell him bash me. Tell him it's no proof of Malik just you know anything. Everything I did is I'm a man of my word. I say what I mean. I do what I I tell you I'm going to do. And and, and they know that. Everyone knows that. So it's not like I'm bitter or stuff like that. No, yeah. I'm happy. I yeah. feel good not being suffocated anymore. You know, and that's the whole thing about it. So when you say uh, you feel better when it's your friends come up, mm-hmm. I have a friend, Justin. You know, um, everywhere I went, I took him with me. Mm-hmm. He can he can attest to this. Every, Jeff Garland. I was like, hey, man, Jeff Garland saw me like grinding. I'm a grinder. Open mics every night. And he was like, I like that. And he, he, I was like, hey, if you like me, you're going to love my guy. Brian Callen. I used to, open, a lot of people don't know that. When I was on Fighter and the Kids, I wasn't trying to replace Brian. I used to feature for Brian. Yeah. He saw me. He was like, bro, something about this kid, because I work hard. Mm-hmm. So you, you can't talk about my work ethic, because I was like, yo, that, that's like, to me, that's like the, the GOAT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so... Uh, I, and with Brian Cow, I was like, "Hey, bro, I got I got a friend, Justin Elliott, and he went with, with Brendan Schaub." I was like, "Hey, yo, thank you for bringing me on tour. Hey, I got a friend, Justin Elliott. So you want to bring your guys up, mm-hmm. of course. So it's up to him to make that decision. Like, yo, I want to. Okay, cool. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. He has to work hard. Yeah, because yeah, if yeah. you if someone vouches for you, you have to prove. Don't make me look bad. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. That's the word. But that's your friend. You know, he works hard. So I just try to put as much mon- like many people. I can't on because a lot of people, you know, they don't get opportunities like this. And I know it's, it's like a crab in a bucket mentality. But I was like, yo, you, it's not like that. It's Hollywood. A lot of people can eat out here. A hundred percent. Just just stop thinking like that. Like it's a new, I seen guys blow up on Instagram. Now they're in movies. I seen guys blow up on YouTube. Now they're in, it's just create your own content, your own lane. It's, it's, it's you don't have to dictate. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy because a lot of people don't think that, right? So yeah. sometimes people feel that somebody else's success takes away from them. Uh-huh. And, and it sucks, right? Yeah. But those are people who are also not very confident in their own skills, right? Yeah. Because let's say for me, right? Like I have a friend who, I don't know, we let's say I started a, a podcast with a friend who nobody fucking knows, right? Okay. And I'm like, but he's funny and we're going we're gonna to do this podcast together. Obviously, I'll start it up and then I'll pay him a check or whatever. Well, if he gets big, bigger and bigger and bigger, and he starts his own podcast, I'm not going to feel a certain way. I'm going to be like, that's fucking dope. I'm glad people know who he is. Mm-hmm. And now he could pave his own way. You know, then if he can't be on my podcast because he wants to start his own thing, be my guest, man. I'm glad you're successful. We'll, we'll, I'll figure something else out. And I feel like a lot of people should have that mentality because at the end of the day, you can always bet on yourself if you're that fucking good. They're scared to, though. Yeah. They don't want to take that risk. It's yeah. a risk betting on yourself. Yeah. It's a lie because you understand the odds are stacked against you. Mm-hmm. But once you prove to yourself, like, bro, I don't care what odds against me, I'm still going to be successful. Yeah. If you have that mentality, you have your mind made up, you don't, you don't know what will happen. Mm-hmm. But a guy, again, guys, you can't, I can't force that in you. It has to be in you. Yeah. You know, and, and I, again, like some guys, I know some guys want to live on their knees. Like, man, I accept whatever they give me. Do you feel like a lot of your your mentality probably comes from your 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 boxing career? Because I know a lot of like people who played, not played. I'm sorry, a lot of people who've uh, well, I played football, like, and, and they did wrestling yeah. and all these like extreme sports, boxing and stuff, contact sports. They seem to like take this mentality and apply it elsewhere too, right? Yeah. Like, because I've I've only like probably trained boxing in the last year, and that shit fucking sucked. <laughs> what <laughs> you mean? <laughs> that shit is so painful, man. Let me tell you this, man. Like, okay. so I, I did a I did a, a boxing session with uh, my guy Savant Young, right? Okay. Former pro fighter, um, everything else. Great, great coach. And he was like, "Yo, come and do some work, and then let's see if you want to work." Let me tell you something, man. This guy had me fucking well, yeah. in that fucking ring, just just doing. He goes, "No jabs," and I just want you to move your feet. I want to see how you move. I want you to throw feints. Don't throw jabs. Don't throw crosses. Whatever. Mm. That five minutes, I threw up. That you threw shit, up. That shit was. Exa- yeah, as you go five, not three. That shit was exhausting. Maybe uh-huh. it might have been one minute, but your boy fat as fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> dog. And I'm like, this is what a fighter has to go through. Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I, I didn't throw a single punch, He's and just... I'm exhausted. Yeah. And then we did round after round. He goes, all right, next round, you're just gonna shadow box. And then you're going to throw your punches, but I want to see you move in and out. I want to see you fucking roll. I want to see you put the defense in your shadow mm. boxing as well. I threw up in my mouth again. 
And he was like, cool, you can take a break. And that break's like a minute. And that I minute said, went by like that. Oh, it's 30 seconds in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I was gym. like, yo, yeah. this is what boxers have to go through. Like, yeah. this is rough. And I feel like with that mentality, you could kind of pursue anything. If you could be in that physical state where you're throwing up in your mouth all the time <laughs> and I even throw punches, yeah. it makes me really respect boxers a lot, you know? Bruh, I, I love boxing. And to your point, I think to just basically have a backbone, box, you have to be a boxer. But- I think it's more my mentality is more coming from my dad and mm. and my dad was just like a stand up guy and I was like he raised me to be that and also just being from Baton Rouge Louisiana in my neighborhood I wasn't the best I wasn't the most talented and I just wanted to prove to them like no nah, mm. I'm good I'm good so it's just that mentality of of oh, I, I know I'm is is people out there better than me but I'm gonna work harder than everyone yeah and and. Then I start working harder, and then oh, this is like oh, Malik is the best in the neighborhood. You always wanted to, and that's the mentality though. Like you know, oh, like that's how we click because we were talking about oh, you're so spiteful. You you know, if someone says you can't do something, oh, I can't do it. I'm gonna prove to you I can do it just to show you. You said I can't do it. Yeah, and that's the mentality that I think we both have, and I was that's attracted <laughs> attracted me towards you. But uh, uh, boxing it played a major part, but I say majority. Is my pops mm. how he was raised and how he raised me and just like bro you know if you take anything you know don't be surprised yeah 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 that that hard worker mentality is sometimes so i put out this tweet not too long ago where i said that it sometimes sucks but when you work really hard for the things that you have in life and people say that the only reason why you're at where you're at is because you're lucky and that shit bothers me a lot right because luck always has a part in in your success right but that's not the whole fucking picture like you weren't there for the grind. You weren't there when I was putting hours and hours of work in, right? But then you go, okay, well, you're lucky. It's like, well, there's a lot of people who are lucky just like me, but they didn't capitalize on the opportunity. That's the difference, right? And, you know, people got in the feelings about that. It's like, yo, David, there's some people out there who were just as hard as you that didn't get to where you're at. And I was like, well, that's because they didn't work as hard as me. <laughs> that's what it is. That's how you cancel the situation. No, yeah, yeah, in the argument. Yeah, yeah, that's really what it is. Yeah. And I'm not saying that same level of success, but anybody who is the hardest person working in the room, they always reach some level of success. I've yet to see otherwise. I've yeah. never seen it, right? Yeah. And some people kind of think they kind of misconstrue hard work with make, doing stupid work. So it's like, yeah, you could be the person that fucking um that digs a hole constantly and look for this pot of gold. But if the pot of gold is in that other hole next to you, yeah, you're a hard worker, but you're still not going to get the riches on the other side. Exactly. So great. You're a hard worker, but you didn't work smart. You didn't use this shit here. Thank you. So thank people you. don't understand I'm that. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Like, yeah you're going to work hard, but you got to work smart. Yeah. If you were working hard with no destination, you're just going to be, oh, he worked hard. Yeah. But you're still going to be right there. Mm -hmm. You got to have a plan and you got to have, uh, my dad, before I started comedy, uh, he's a big supporter of my career. He goes. What do you want? Right, right down to like a five year goal. I was like, bro, I'm trying to be funny. He's yeah, like, yeah, but stand up is a business. My my dad is a business minded guy, so I was like, bro, he literally had me write down a five year go just in case you know people get lost. You see guys in yeah, eight yeah, yeah. years at open mic, and he funny. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? What? Well, shit, I'm just. I'm not, I got a couple of things in the works. They always say that. Like, I got a couple of things. Mother, it's, never, uh, it's never in the works. How many times has a motherfucker <laughs> said that? Dude, say, yeah, I'm talking to some of these. I got, I got the script going on. Bitch, everybody got, shut the fuck up. I got some shit going on. You know, I, you know me. Yeah, yeah. They was yeah. like, yeah, you know me. I'm eight years in this shit. But uh, uh, yeah, just a five-year goal. And I was just trying to be funny. But then I started writing. I was like, okay, this is what I want. And this is what I want. And this is what I want. So I had a destination. And it's, it's, it's so crazy how you can have a journey. You want to go on this journey, but you have to have a destination. A lot of people go on this journey. Like, oh, shit, I see mm. wherever it takes me, wherever the wind blows. And then you just find yourself over there in the in strip club or something like that. You ain't stripping <laughs> yeah. or something, something, shaking your ass. But he had me write a five-year goal down. And I went back like recently when I left fighting the kids. I, looked, I was like, damn, I exceeded. Because <laughs> I've only been doing stand-up for three years. I was like, damn, I ain't over here. I jumped all my goals. Now I got to rewrite. You know, another five year goes, but that's the plan. I always had a mentality that's of amazing, yeah. work smart, work smart. So you don't, you don't, I don't look at anything as a, as like a fail or, or, you know, a bump in the road. No, nah, it's a little detour. That's a little hiccup. And we could that's, that's some good advice, man. Like the whole destination part, because I feel like even for me, I get lost with that shit, right? I'm just kind of going about my ways. But every time I set a goal or a destination, some shit happened. Like even this podcast, this podcast wasn't. So I was doing YouTube, right? And people heard this story. I'm just going to tell it again. But YouTube, 
when 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 the company got acquired by Google, right? There was issues with um, them just putting advertisements on everybody's shit. So when I was doing YouTube before, um, I was doing one video a week, you know, and I was doing basically, it's like a really shit version of stand-up where I just chop it up and I just talk shit to a fucking camera. That's it. It's essentially what I do now, but just in a five-minute <laughs> format, right? Uh -huh. And that was making me a lot of money. It was making me on average, if I did one to two videos per week, probably making about 15 to 20 grand a, a month. So that's how much money it was, right? Brother, brother. <laughs> we know about to speed past that. <laughs> you said you was making 15 to 20 grand a yeah, month. Yeah, just making maybe four to six videos a month. And so when YouTube, <laughs> YouTube they found out, yeah. they're like, okay, well, we can't put ads on everything, right? Because some of these advertisers started getting a little apprehensive about putting. So we got Pampers and the video is a fucking video of somebody cutting somebody's head off and you see a Pampers ad on it. So Pampers will be like, no, I don't want my videos, my ads on these videos. Associated with, oh. So that's when you see when you upload these videos, it's like, well, do you have cursing? Do you have this? Because they're trying to see what advertisers they can curate on your channel. Got you. I curse a lot. I say crazy shit. I tell people to go suck a dick and go fuck yourself. My so guy. let me tell you, Pampers ain't going to put that shit on there. Right? <laughs> Hell no. We're not trying to clean that shit yeah. up. <laughs> so 15K to 20K went down to 2K to 1K a month. Oh. And so... People didn't know this shit, right? And you didn't want to stop cursing? <laughs> nah, fuck that, dude. Okay. I'll, I'll figure my way out. That's yeah. how I work. Okay. Like, I can't, I cannot change what I do when it makes me happy. I love this, dude. I'll figure some shit out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so what I figured out was that, number one, I'm still doing stand-up. I'm still booking college shows. I'm doing all this other stuff. I'm, I started bringing brand deals into me this way so I could supplement that. So I could still keep the content that people still appreciate and love. I'm not going to chase this fucking dollar. If I wanted to chase a dollar, I would have done something way more stable than comedy. Off top. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, Off fuck, top. Thank you, bro. You know? Yeah. A lot of guys are bro, okay, good team because I'm loving you already. Right? So <laughs> yeah. we're doing this and then the, this idea of a podcast came up and I was like, okay, I got to start flipping things up, right? I did the acting. I did the film stuff. What do I want to do again? I want to be able to speak to people, say what I want, do comedy. Well, podcast might be it. And then podcast is the part that saved my ass. It's not making a shit ton of money, but it's enough to pay the bills and do do what I asked why I can get money on the side. And so I just never changed what I wanted to do. I just kind of changed the, the way I, I, I was allowed to support myself. And it was hard, right? It was fucking hard, man. It was, it was difficult. Like yeah. when you're making 15 to 20 grand a month doing something that you've done for six, seven years off that point, maybe eight years. And all of a sudden like that, it goes away. And I'm like, Oh shit! What the fuck happened? <laughs> you know, no, no, that's I love that. And he, before I would cut you off, I, yeah, go ahead. It was a quote. I forgot what uh, guy said, but it was so beautiful. He said, "Adversity creates creativity." Mm. And you know, you didn't know what was going to happen, but you got creative in that aspect. I just wanted to throw that out there because that cool. no, that's yeah. that's fucking smart. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, just to go back to my point of like having a destination, I said, you know what? I'm gonna do a podcast and I'm gonna make it look good. And my thing is, I don't. You see this room. There's not a producer, editor, anything in sight. This oh, is yeah. just all me. Like it's, you know, it's work, yeah, right? Yeah, but I, I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to figure this shit out. I did film. I know how to light shit up. I know how to shoot things. Yeah. So let me figure this stuff out. And when I had a destination is when the goal happened. Because if I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to try a podcast. It would have never, this would have never happened at all. I would have just maybe had a couple of guests here and there. And the next thing you know, fucking there's a TMZ video of me sucking dick on the street for some well, dollars or some shit. Well, shit. <laughs> Well, God damn, man. Yeah. Baby, I told so, you. I told you. I Let me tell you something. I'm not going to stop cursing on my jam, but I'll suck a dick. <laughs> like, that's where I draw the line. Like, yo, what the fuck? Your morals are all fucked what up, dude. <laughs> I did not see. I think the listeners didn't no see that. No pause, coming. bitch. No, it's like, that's what it is. <laughs> something right there. I'm pretty sure no homo, but people are like, we still respect him, though. <laughs> he didn't censor his jam, but he out here sucking dick. <laughs> that man stand on principle. Yeah. I got principles. I fucking wipe my mouth. <laughs> I got principles, bitch. <laughs> Yeah. My ball wet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, you stupid. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, but for you, man, like I'm, I'm always curious too because you you were tell me a little bit about your boxing life, right? Because I'm trying to figure out how a fucking boxer goes. You know what? I'm gonna do stand up comedy. <laughs> like how right. the fuck does that happen? You know? I, it's it's funny. Fi I have so many funny stories of, in boxing. It's so fucking funny. But uh, my boxing story was just pretty simple. My dad put me in boxing at the age of like. Eight, nine, something like around that yeah. time, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, young guy. And I uh <laughs> I was just I was just full of energy. So when I learned how to box, I was great at it. I was good at it. 
And to the point where, you know how like, when you're good at it, and you was like, okay, that's gloves. Let me see what the knuckles feel like. Mm. You know, and I used to inch for a street fight. I used to go to school, and then I used to sit in the back of the bus because that's where we roast each other. Yeah. And then if of someone course. was like, man, I know Malik ain't talking. What you say? I was like, hey, bro, I know you've been boxing. Relax. You're kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, damn. You're damn. <laughs> I wanted you to say, yeah. you know. But again, that was the... Um, but it was it was my boxing journey is great because uh, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and my dad was inching to go back to Los Angeles. He's from LA, okay. And Hurricane Katrina hit. Ah, uh, yeah. And yeah, he yeah. was like, "Oh, that's our excuse to we about to go big." He was my mm-hmm. mom. She's a Southern belle. She wanted to stay down there. All her family out there. He was like, "Listen, you coming with us? Malik's about to be a professional boxer, mm-hmm. right?" So we go out there, come to LA. I'm sparring in wild card. I'm killing in the wild card. I go to Broadway boxing. I, I go all over gyms in LA, Maywood, every boxing gym, they know about Malik B. Mm-hmm. And then I went to, I was like, man, my mom was like, well, you love boxing, but I need you to just, uh, just a fallback plan. So it was acting. So I used to, I went to school for acting as well. Oh shit. Yeah. You didn't know that. Yeah. So I was boxing simultaneous, simultaneously with acting. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of people, so I go, I go boxing. This is how crazy, what, I don't care, Cover City set it up. My dad had have the school, like have me go to school like three times a week, and I still have perfect attendance. I, all the teachers are sending him the work for the week I have to do, and I just show up for three times because they know oh Malik is training, and I show up for acting class. Wow, that was a, I couldn't because there's no homework for that. So every day we had acting class, I had to show up, and that was like what a, a Thursday, and he had put me in these plays and I had to learn. I was like I don't know what's what's this about, but I love acting. And my mom was like, Yo, okay, cool. I'll accept you boxing if you just can stick with acting. Yeah. So I uh, graduated. I went to uh, Vegas. I, that's when I was in Floyd's gym. Big time. So I, I grew up in Floyd's gym. Floyd is my guy. Spar Floyd Mayweather. Damn, I spar- damn you yeah. tall as fuck, though. Yeah, I was, but I was 147. I was a skinny guy. You were 147? Yeah, Get the fuck. I, I was 147 when I was six years old. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, God Are you trying damn. to shoot me down? He was a welterweight <laughs> no, at I'm six? I'm a fat boy, dude. <laughs> I was 147 fucking five foot one. <laughs> God damn, you yeah, a little tenor ball. I, I, no, I was fat as fuck, bro. <laughs> no, I saw those yeah. I saw those well, pictures. I was big, big. See, but you was, see, I was an ectomorph. Like, I was yeah. a skinny guy. That, and I, my, I had high uh, metabolism. So yeah. I didn't really, I ate, but I didn't really care. Yeah, yeah. So 147, sparring Floyd Mayweather, sparring like, like these big time dogs. And I didn't, I got hurt. I got injured on some street stuff. Uh, and, my mom was like, okay, this is a great time to go back to acting. I was like, nah. Well, so you didn't get hurt in the boxing ring? You got hurt outside? No, no. I got hurt in the boxing ring on some street stuff. So we, this guy had beef with They was like, sell it. And we really had beef. And I was beating him up. And it's so bad that he picked me up. And then he slammed me. But I never wanted to like have like uh, my, I never wanted to hit the mat. Yeah. So when it hit the mat, it just this part right here where I got just like snapped. Like your, it's snap. probably your meniscus, right? Yeah, my menis- my MCF. Yeah. So it snapped. I'm like, oh, shit. So oh, that shit sucks, man. I know. So I couldn't get up. And now I, I was out for a minute. Yeah. When I was out for a minute, I was like, man, damn, man. This is this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. So uh, I wasn't the same. And Michael B. Jordan comes in my boxing gym. So I'm back in LA. And I saw I met Michael B. Jordan and Floyd Mayweather this one day. I was like, what's up, Wally? Yeah, you know? <laughs> I didn't know what he was doing though. Yeah. But you see, you see Wallace, and this is about time. This is not Michael B. Jordan, Black Panther, or Creed. Or, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. talking about regular Michael B. Jordan. You have to know him. Yeah. So I'm like, what's up, Wallace? And I mean, Fantastic Four didn't go out, come out yet. He's like, hey, what's up? He's a cool dude. So three months down the line, I see him in L.A. But he comes in with my childhood friend, again the neighborhood, who I grew up with. He's his trainer, Corey Callette. Oh shit! Yeah, Corey Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah. Baton Louisiana. He used to be. He used to be the mailman. He used to come over to my house and we'll box together. He was like, "Bro, you not? And, you know, the he, fuck out of here." I That's swear, crazy. I swear. He walks in with my childhood friend, and not only does Michael B. Jordan remember me, he walks in with a mutual friend. So he was like, "Hey, bro, you a cool dude? We talk. We chopping it up like how you and I chop it." Yeah. And he's a cool dude. Yeah. And he was like, "Hey, bro," and he was like, "Bro, yo, you, you know you up next." He was. I'm like, "Man, I ain't worry about that dude." Listen. So what you? Uh, you know? I'm yeah. Just, I'm talking. He was like, "So okay, cool." So. Then he see me transform, and then I'm whooping dude ass. And he was like, bro, hey, I'm in this movie Creed. Can you audition? I was like, oh, hell yeah. He was like, you know anything about acting? I ain't want to tell you. I was like, nah, bro, I'm, I'm, pr- I'm fairly new, but mm-hmm. you just send me a you know, script, and I'll do an audition. He was like, cool. Do the audition. Ryan Cooler 
And Michael B. Jordan was like, bro, you can act. Like, yo, he, you got the part if you want it. I said, hell yeah, I want it. And from that Creed set, I was like, uh, he was showing me like the ropes about like, yo, I was stand over here so you can get more air to it. And just like guiding me. And I was guiding him. I was like, bro, I think if you roll your shoulder like this and come with the uppercut, I'm just like, that's how we're, mm-hmm. like, it's a beautiful symbolic relationship because he's guiding me on acting. I'm guiding him on boxing. And it's so yeah. beautiful. So he was like, bro, do you want to box again or do you want to act? I said, I mean, I, I want to do both, but right now I, I got this acting bug. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, cool. He set me up for Barbershop 3. Oh, shit. Yeah, he set me up. He gave me a screen. He's like, yo, this is my agent. Hey, can you send him? Like, he wants to do this acting stuff. He's, that's how cool this guy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he set me up for Barbershop 3. Didn't get it, and I'm so mad. But uh, <laughs> I guess he wasn't going to slide that yeah, shit in. Like, hey, he sent me up for bot. Didn't get it. Fuck that shit. But hey. <laughs> Want a good movie anyways. I was telling my mom, like, Mom, we made it. After yeah. Creed, I'm going to Barbershop 3, and they're going to love you, and they're going to love me. Yeah. Get ready for the red carpet. Yeah. Then, <laughs> she was, you know, so I didn't get that. and But I see him at the premiere, movie premiere. And this, it, trust me, I'm going to get to the point. I see him at the movie uh, premiere at Creed, and mm-hmm. we vibe, and we kill it. Like, hey, what's up, bro? Long time. And I meet, he's like, bro, this young guy is an upcoming director named uh, Gerard Carmichael. I mean, uh, Rob McMurray, yeah, he, he's uh, having a film. I feel like you and him will bond. I was like, thank you. So he, Gerard, we chopped it up. He's like, bro, I'm doing like a, a movie for Netflix, a college movie. You want to be a part of it? You want to audition? I was like, hell yeah. So audition for it, blew it out the water, and I got the role. It's called Burning Sands. On the okay. Fraternity movie. Okay. So fraternity, I'm out there just like laughing. I'm living. Because I'm, I'm like, hey, I was on Creed. Yeah, no, small, yeah. You know, small role, but don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, and I'm with these fun, like real actors and I'm killing it. And it was like, I'm, I'm making everyone laugh. They was like, bro, do you do stand up? I was like, nah. I was like, bro, you should try stand up. You got everyone. That's your, That's where you should go. I was like, bro, well, I like acting. It was like, yeah, the hell with that. You do stand up. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, okay. So that really sat with me for like three weeks while I was on set. I was like, damn. Stand up, so I was just start watching comedy, uh, you know, stand up in my trailer, and mm-hmm. just try to implement those kind of dope stuff. Because I was the comedy relief in that movie, yeah. And I tried to implement that in, you know, my character. And then I got on set, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna take a class. I took a class. I it was a six week class. I was in there for like people who had it like five years, seven years, eight years. Teacher was like, yo, you the best. I really hate if you like don't. Push forward with it. Yeah. His name is David. David. He writes for like works with Kevin Hart. Killer, by the way. Beast. He was like, man, I think you should sue stand up. And I've been doing that ever since. That's crazy, man. Your That's journey like, is nuts. It's dude. crazy, right? Like, nope. mo- yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker's like, you should try this. She's like, you probably right. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, just go and do it. I, I went with it. I was like, well, hell, you know, but again, it was. You know, you watch that up all the time. I grew up on Comic View. Def yeah. Jam. Yep. I, I watch it, but I was like, oh, I never thought of, you know, me saying it. I, I, in my vocabulary, I know like 193 words. <laughs> yeah. It's improving, though. It's yeah. improving, though. <laughs> nah, yeah. but uh, it was, it's like boxing. That boxing gave me the confidence. Acting gave me my act outs, my stage presence. And, you know, in the comedy, I was always funny. So it's just like I needed each and every part of my journey to get to where I am today. I think that's you know what's crazy. so weird about the school because I'm hearing you you speak and you're talking about your story, right? And it's so different from when you were a fighter and the kid because you never said anything on the podcast. <laughs> so it was like it was it's, it's so weird for me, yeah, right? Because yeah. I remember being on the podcast asking questions and I, I couldn't get answers, you know. So I was yeah. like, oh, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. So I feel like for you, anyways, I mean, whatever happened between you and Brendan and whatever. It, it seems to be working in your favor because yeah. now, now you really get to be yourself. People I get to know you. who the fuck you are. I told you, man. Once like, you you know you don't feel suffocated, you feel like in a positive environment and everything is positive. Like I'm a positive guy. I love like thriving off of people's energy. I'm mm-hmm. an energy I'm, you know, energetic guy. So I w- I wish nothing but the best for people. But I'm I'm happy because now I get to reintroduce myself to like the people. And Fighting the Kids brought me a lot of fans. I love each and every one of them. And I got haters. I love the haters. The haters, they don't have any reason to hate me. They just think I tried to take uh, replace Brian Kelly. I was like, no, I tried to introduce you to Malik B. I wasn't trying to 
replays anyway. Yeah. They don't have any reason to hate me. Uh, I so. mean, people who hate like that, they, I mean, they don't even really hate. They just, they just kind of write comments because they know that people are going to upvote it and it makes them feel really good. Mm. I get caught up in that stupid shit sometimes too because yeah. I always respond back to hate comments, but it's usually when I'm taking a shit. So it's like, <laughs> that's like the only time, if I'm responding to somebody's negative comments because yeah. I'm taking a shit and I'm on my phone. Okay. But you know, what, I, what I've started, and you know, it's very weird too because I, I know I can verbally say like, "Hey, you got to be above that shit." But sometimes it just feel good. I know, well, I respond. You know? back to, yeah, I, I know what you mean. You know, but it's, sometimes, but it's you know like, why? Because yeah. we thrive off positive, positive feed. Like positive energy feels natural. Yeah. It's like this was supposed to happen. But when you get a negative comment, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit right with you mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, that's not what's supposed to happen. Yeah. So we we are attracted or we cater to that specific comment because it's not natural it's yeah. unnatural sometimes i just gotta stop being a little bitch though like, no, it's, I, not, yeah. it's not even yeah. being a bitch though like, like for me like sometimes because it's just like i and i have to you know eat my own advice here too because okay. you know what we do is in the public eye and it's yeah. meant to be judged yeah so we can't be upset that the stuff that we do that's meant to be judged gets judged now we just have to filter out how we should be giving love to the people who show support the most. Of course. That's what I have to do. It's yeah. like if somebody's out there, they're writing these comments like, hey, man, I love your shit. Give them a like. Say thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, but, you know, it sucks sometimes. And I do want to, I actually got this from somebody who wrote this shit on, on a comment. They go, hey, I appreciate you a lot, but it seems like you only respond to the people that seem to hate you. But I've been writing a comment supporting you and you never say anything. And I'm like, damn, this guy's right. Like I've put so much attention on trying to roast somebody also to make people laugh. Yeah. But. Sometimes just giving them a heart to show that I saw their 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 comment helps out too. That's why even on my videos, like I'm liking everything because I'm saying like, hey, look, I recognize that you wrote the stuff and mm -hmm. you guys are supporting the channel. So I gotta be a little smart about that. But you know, like I say, man, your boy get emotional. Sometimes. Hey, you get emotional, <laughs> yeah. bro. That's a I'm, Drake song. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Drake got us like hey, this, man, dog. So, you know, I'm I'm ultimate light skin. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> I gotta fucking got do our, this. Got our legs out. This what happens. Yeah. <laughs> We don't got no pants on. This is what happened. That's when, exactly what it is, man. I don't have any pants on, bro. Nah, uh, I, I, I respond to everyone. It's just yeah. When I have time, negative and positive, but more positive because, hey, I mean, they're going to say what they want to say. I can care less. But if you give me a positive comment, I reply to you all the time in my DMs. People know that. And I can vouch for that. Yeah. Even at the shows. I remember one time uh, we were in, I forget what city. I want to say Nashville or Texas, but or for it had to be florida it had to be florida yeah mm -hmm. it was somewhere that was open and the guy i was just you know shaking hands with people at the show like hey you know because i want to i want to communicate with people but this guy hated me so much on a podcast he didn't say anything to, towards me but his girl came up so she was like hey can you take a picture he was like nah damn yeah. Like that, fuck, yeah. bro. i was like damn what is it but i was like bro and then uh i was like bro and she was like don't worry he's a fan of you know Everyone on the podcast, but you. I was like, damn, what I do you? He, he, he was like, I don't know. So he took this picture. I was like, bro, that's kind of messed up. And he was like, he was like, yo, I'm not taking the picture. So when someone else did, and he was watching me take a picture with his girl, I squeezed it tighter just because I, <laughs> I mess with you. I mess with you. I mess with you. I mess with, I mess with you. Now. I started whispering dirty shit in the ear. <laughs> nah, I just, I just, I was like, bro, whatever I did to offend you, bro, it's all good. Like, you know what I mean? Just keep supporting the podcast. He was like, bro, I don't like you because. And he was so dumb. He was like, Yo. so you don't even know me, bitch. It's a yeah. podcast, bro. Yeah. He, but this is this is what his answer was. I don't like the way you laugh. I was like, oh, okay. How would you want me to laugh? Yeah. Laugh regular. I was like, how did did you laugh tonight? He was like, yeah. I was like, bro, how did you laugh? He was like, man, I ain't gotta tell you how I laugh. I was like, well, <laughs> shit, I ain't gotta tell you how I laugh. And then he was like, what you wanna do? What the fuck do you wanna do? And nah, nah, but uh, <laughs> why is this dude so angry? Nah, he was just angry. I don't know. He was hating. Maybe, maybe his girl took a picture with me. I don't know. But you I was know like, why? You know why he hates you though? Because his girl like you a lot. Probably. It's because you're probably her favorite, and that's uh, why he hates you. That's what I. That's why they. That's uh, why was, guys are like that though, man. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the funny thing about dudes, right? And. So many dudes like to make fun of women because they say women are sensitive. Man, men are just as fucking sensitive. Mm. It's just not socially appropriate for us to express how sensitive we are. We just we just act like we don't fucking care, right? Yeah, yeah. Dudes are just as sensitive, man. Because you, man, talk about this some simple shit, right? How many times do you know a guy? This is how, they say guys aren't sensitive, right? Well, one of your boys starts losing their hairline and you make one hairline joke. Oh, all <laughs> see, the time. Yo, see oh. how fucking mad somebody gets. They're like, oh, what the fuck? 
It's like, bro, see, you're just as sensitive. Exactly. We're all sensitive <laughs> yeah. about our personal shit. Shit. You Someone know? told me about my hairline. I'm like, bro, what, what you want to do about it right now? Yeah. <laughs> what you not? Nah, now nah, you looking at it. What you want to do about it? You know what you? the fucking shitty thing is about this is like both, you know, you and Brendan, you guys are professional fighters. Like somebody say some shit like it's on site. It's like, fuck. <laughs> nah, I, like, I, 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 I was like, like Joe Rogan too. Joe yeah. Rogan, fuck your ass up. What you going to say to him, dude? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. But I rose back. I love, because I grew up in the back of the school bus. Like, yeah. I mean, and I love, you know, that's comedy to me. You, you know, like you said, with some of my prior barbershops. I yeah. grew up in, you can see my goddamn pervy hairline. I grew yeah. up in, in barbershops, all black barbershops. You know, what do you do? You talk about sports and they roast people. Yep. And you had this, if the one, if you, if it's your day to just get roasty, you better fight back. Yep. Because they didn't, once they show, once you show signs of weakness, everybody pile on. Yeah. I told this story on Fighter and the Kids. Uh, so I took a sex pill one time. <laughs> <laughs> why bro bro because my like, girl why? it wasn't it wasn't with my ex it wasn't like man i don't know am i in tour i don't know just sex got born uh-huh. so you know little malik b was like man i don't feel like getting up yeah. right so my friend's like don't worry about that bro go to 7-eleven go get that gorilla like that gorilla pill behind the gas and, and people that's listen don't ever go to no 7-eleven for no goddamn sex don't pill. first of all don't go to 7-eleven to get any type of medication in general <laughs> the fuck are you talking about bro <laughs> this motherfucker got a serious medical ailment and you got it from a fucking gas station dude what the fuck? <laughs> hey, look. yo what the fuck is wrong with you man it was my big bro dre it was my cat dre he was hey, like bro don't worry anybody named dre shouldn't be giving you medical <laughs> yeah. advice you know what i'm saying and it was love- my boy pookie like Poo- <laughs> yo what the fuck yeah, it was my boy Tree Frog. Like, fuck this dude. <laughs> I mean, I was a young guy. So I was like, oh, you sure? He was like, trust me. She going to love you long time. You know, you start yeah. saying stuff. like I was like, all right, bet. Because, again, I think she was going, like, back home. And I was like, all right, I got to please her. Right? Because I was like, either way, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm secure. Yeah. I take the pill. And then I eat my food. And nothing. it doesn't, nothing happens. But I got a, a haircut appointment the next day. Right, I was like, okay, cool. When she leaves, I'll go get a haircut. But I'm like, okay. She was like, you ready? You ready to have sex? I'm like, yeah. Not kicking in. I think it's oh shit. It's not. I'm like, bro, I took the pill. What the hell? And I'm still on. I'm like, okay, cool. She about to get upset, right? Uh So she nothing happens. The next morning, I'm on full salute. Like I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, it kicked in that late. Oh, it kicked, bro. That in the morning, I woke up like, whoof. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's a snake in the bed. That kind of, <laughs> yeah. So I'm on full salute. Anaconda up. She has to go to work. She has to hurry. I'm like, girl, get your ass back in this bed. Yeah. She was like, and you know, thing, one thing about women, when it's, they're very great at time. When mm-hmm. it's, they have to go to work, they, they, wouldn't, to work. They, would, they wouldn't be five minutes late because mm-hmm. they want to have sex. They're really like, I'm mm-hmm. on my bread. And she was. I'm like, girl, come on. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's I'm like, in there it's happening. <laughs> I know last night was a failure, but come on, girl. I'm trying yeah. to succeed with you. So she leaves. I'm like, damn, I gotta go, I gotta go get a haircut. Now I could have easily canceled. They was like, why you just didn't cancel the, your haircut appointment? My barber is going out of uh vacation. So this is yes. Man, I know what that's like. Why you think I got a hat on right now? Exactly. My boy out in Florida right now. See, see what I'm saying? People listen, barbers, if you cut my hair, you don't have a life. Yeah. You, you don't have a life. Don't spend time with your family. Don't don't I hate that. And right? we just talked about loyalty. I'm so <laughs> fucking loyal to my barber. Likewise. I'll wait. Likewise. I'll wait. Oh, bro, I'll go to anyone yeah. else. You my family. Yeah. Bro, I I, I call my barber because he, he's in stocks. He's like, man, I made a lot of money in the stocks. I was like, what you going to do? He was like, bro, I think I'm, I'm really trying to teach 100 kids about stocks and bonds, and I don't really want to cut hair anymore. I said, bro, I'm still alive. So you better shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, I was like, you're talking the wrong <laughs> shit right now. I called yeah. you to ask about the kids. They yeah. Like, yeah, they, they doing good. I was like, no, nah, not your real kids. I'm talking about the Clippers. Look, yeah. Are they, are they still short? <laughs> you gonna fucking leave you alone like that? Yeah. Like, come on, man. Man, fuck these kids. Fuck dude. The, Look at my hair. The hell with the kids. I'm yeah. talking about these Clippers. <laughs> nah, the guard. Yeah. Um, so I go to the barbershop. By the way, I had to tuck it up. Nah, I'm still on, you know, that tuck. You had to put the mm-hmm. right there next to your belly button. Yeah, okay. Right? So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm tucked up. I go sit down, sit down. I wait for my barber. You know, as I, hey, Malik, you next. I'm like, all right, cool. I get up. I'm untucked. So the barber, and there's nothing but dudes in there. Get it, the fuck out of here, bro. Bro, it took one dude to say, man, this motherfucker hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why at the barbershop yeah. out of all the places does this have to fucking happen? Bro, let me tell you something. If I was at the barbershop <laughs> full of dudes and yeah. I see a fucking sexy chocolate man with this dick hard in there, I'm chopping it off. I'm like, you better get the fuck out of here with this shit. 
I'm fucking samurai. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, they killed me. Bro, they you killed me that day. Bro, I, it was so bad. You can never go back there ever. Bro, I was I had to find a new barber because <laughs> <laughs> he was like, bro, nah, you're not next. You until you get all soft. Go outside and fix that shit. What the fuck are you? Bro, they start roasting me. Like, my barber was like, bro, I'm gonna give you a cut, but it ain't gonna be that hard. They start <laughs> Yo. They was just killing me. I was like, bro, what the fuck? Yo, I, I, like, yo, I took a dick pill. I, I was like, fucking. I, it was so bad because then I started explaining to myself like, no, this for my girl. I, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not took a dick pill. This nigga, you can't get up? Yeah, like, yo, that's they started, funny, dude. They that's me, fucking like, funny. Yeah, bro. And then I sat in the chair and then after they roast you for like a good 10, 15 minutes, I right, come on, man, get this cut. And I sat in the chair. He was like, bro, I'm going to tell you right now. If the dick, if you, you better, this shit better not come up because that little apron, it better, yeah. I better not see it. I was like, oh, I was like, this motherfucker bro, making a teepee out here, yeah. like you camping and shit, like you a Boy Scout. You better get the fuck out of here with that shit. Your but crisscross yeah. applesauce leg and a teepee and shit. Exactly. Like, that's why I can't stay. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking funny, Yo, dude. Bro, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the barbershop. But man. you know, like some people who, like, I've read that if they take those, like, virility pills and, uh, like, the side effect is that, You'll just have a forever boner and then you'll never get an erection again. Like that's the side effect that could happen. What? You 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 play with fucking fire. So you can get uh I don't take a minute. I don't take, that was the only pill like I I don't yeah, drink. Yeah, because if you're thing. young yeah. and you can still get a boner, and the only reason why your dick's not getting hard is because you know shit's not really popping off with your lady. Yeah. Like you're kind of lucky because if that shit lasts for more than like two days, you can have like erectile dysfunction and never get a heart on again. Bro, I felt my heart beat in my wrist. Did you go to the hospital? No, hell no. You're lucky, I could, bro. I couldn't tell anyone. I couldn't tell anyone. Now, you should just walk in dick hard and everything. Like, look, look help me. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to tell nah, you a story after okay. this, because I can't tell it on the podcast, but I'll tell you some funny <laughs> story okay, after this. All right, but, <laughs> yeah, like, you couldn't get, like, erectile dysfunction where it never works again. It's happened to people before. What? Where they took a dick pill, and then they had an erection past 24 hours, and then it wouldn't go down, and then all of a sudden, it just stopped working for the rest of their life. You got lucky. Well, God damn, God was on my side. Yes, he was. Because, damn. God was like, you know what? You're just going to get roasted. So but, we'll just but, let you have your dick work. Bro, yeah, you go to the barbershop. But here's the crazy thing about it. I didn't even have sex with my girl while I was on heart. When did it go away? How many hours did it take? Uh, I think it was like a full 16 or 18 hours. Shit, yeah, because they say if it's like past 24 hours, then there's a problem. Okay, okay. Yeah, and they said yeah. it hurts too after a while. That shit was hurt like a yeah, That's hurts. what made me. That's why I stay away. I don't take any pills. I take vitamins. I don't drink and smoke. I just like stay natural. So. I'm like, I'm good on I'm surprised that. you don't drink. That's the craziest thing, man. <laughs> you want me to drink so bad. Every, yeah, time, it's like, every time I see you, it's like, bro, what's up? We, uh, it's, I got everything. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, like you the, drinking or what? <laughs> what the fuck? No. <laughs> no, nah, like Korean people, they drink all the fucking time. Like, there's not a point. Even if you've never had alcohol in your life, eventually something happens where you wake up and there's a fucking, there's like naked dudes and bitches around you. <laughs> you fucking blacked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, fucking Korean people drink a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I started drinking when I was 14. What? So, like, super young. You can say that on this podcast. I don't give a fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking when I was 14. I remember the first drink I ever had was with my cousin. Uh, we He invited me. Well, we were, I was having, like, a sleepover at his house, and his dad had a liquor cabinet, right? Okay. Like, all parents do. And then, yeah, <laughs> so, he got a bottle of Remy Martin. We poured it into a, a fucking a bottle of Evian, and we drank that whole bottle, just me and him. <laughs> this is, like, my first alcohol I ever had was fucking- What did it taste like? Like, shit. Okay. Like, <laughs> what you wanted to drink? I get well. He was already drinking even before I did. Oh, when he was like thirteen or some shit, or even maybe even younger than that. I might even be younger than fourteen to be honest with you. But this is just uh, the rough age that I was at. But I remember drinking it and then him drinking it, and I remember it tasted like shit. But when you're younger, you don't want to fucking say it tastes like shit. You're like, yeah, yeah this shit real smooth. Yeah. <laughs> I try to hide and, it. Hell yeah, I, this shit feel yeah. like bourbon. What? Yeah, man, like got that nice oak barrel, uh, 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 per- chrysanthemum taste. I'm <laughs> Wait, just saying what? random yeah. shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm <laughs> no, saying. You say? Try to just make yourself yeah. sound good. But yeah. I was blasted, and I woke up the next day with the fattest fucking. I don't know what happened. Headache. It just the worst experience of my life. But then it became to the point where. I was six foot one since I was fucking like 13. That's so crazy. I was a big boy, yeah. you know, and I was fat as fuck too. So I could hold my liquor really well. So it just became that thing where I hated alcohol, but because people wanted to see me drink because mm-hmm. I could drink so well, I just did it as a party trick. So it just kept continuing. Then when I hit 21, I actually stopped drinking. You the, did? the legal drinking age is when I stopped drinking. I was like, I don't want to drink anymore. Because I got you're so backwards, God damn! Yeah. What the hell? Dude? So I, I started drinking again around when I was like 24, 25 when I moved to K Town. Bunch of Korean people, and mm. they just I'm like I don't believe in peer pressure. Y'all yeah, became an alcoholic for three years. Yeah, that's it. Like Korean let time. me tell you something, dude. Yo, are you serious? I drank a lot. So what's that? What's the drink they have? Like sake or something? like Oh, that? soju is the Korean so, one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So soju is soju. Uh, it's it's 
I, I think it's a potato liquor like vodka too, but it's a, it's a lot weaker. And like in Korea, soju is actually cheaper than water. It is? It's cheaper than water. It's, like, cheaper, to, it's cheaper to get drunk yes, than out there. Than and drink water out in Korea. Oh, oh, yeah. That's how, let me tell you something. My uncle, when he came from Korea, so this dude is a straight alcoholic, okay. right? I did not know this. So when he came to visit here because his one of his kids came here for school, he stayed with us. I was like, all right, cool. He's going to stay with us, whatever. We go out to this one dinner spot. It's this place that has something called uh, Teji Kukbap in Korean. It's it's, a, it's like a pork stew type of thing. Say it again. Teji Kukbap. So Teji, teji means pig. Kukbap. And then cook. That's pretty fucking good, actually. Like, uh, like this my man's culture. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be. You know, 193 words, exactly. and you know, three Korean I'm, words. That's it. I'm on my way. Yeah. I'm about to double up. Yeah. <laughs> so, we went to this restaurant, and I shit you fucking not. He sits there. He looks mad pissed. He looks super upset. Yep. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? He goes, I don't think they serve alcohol here. I was like, yeah, but we're just here for dinner, right? He goes, how am I supposed to eat? I'm like. With the fucking spoon and you put it to your mouth. What do you mean? He goes, you, you can't eat food without drinking alcohol. I'm like, and he just gets up and he walks out. And I'm looking at his wife like, yo, what's what's uncle doing? He's like, I have no idea. He comes back. This fool has a case full of soju. That's six bottles of soju, right? And he sits there and he looks at the waitress. He's talking to her in Korean. He goes, she goes, oh, we can't serve liquor here. He goes, I'm just going to put it into the, the water jug. And then it looks like water. So you don't have to say anything. This dude drinks three bottles to himself at dinner fucking crazy dude three bottles three bottles of that shit to himself and this guy is not dead i'm shocked <laughs> he's not dead he's not dead and he was functioning like he was he functioning can... perfectly fine this dude's a fucking alcoholic i had no idea man how old is he he's like in his 50s he's been drinking all his life he's been drinking his whole life and it's weird because my dad doesn't drink right mm. and so the person that does drink in my household was my mom but when my father became a pastor my mom stopped drinking and so I didn't know that people in our family drink because my dad didn't drink. Didn't touch, yeah. The only time we had alcohol was when we did communion. We had wine. Mm. But other and one time too, by the way, I got smashed when I was like seven years old accidentally. Accidentally. Because okay. it was, you know, the communion <laughs> wine, they yeah, would have like Bible studies and shit. And the communion wine was that cheap ass fucking bottle that, that, that long ass bottle. Yep. Grape, yeah. Yep. I about. So we, it was communion. I thought it was grape juice. And your boy said, gluck, gluck, gluck. I was like, man, this shit tastes funny. And next thing you know, my mom was like, yo, the fuck are you doing? And your boy was blasted at seven, just like, what's going on? I think I'm dying. <laughs> my mom said I was crying and shit. I was like, Bro. I think I think Satan's coming to take me away. <laughs> We're a no. religious household. I thought I was possessed. Yeah. No, you're so stupid. Bro, I have a, it's, it's, well, a little similar story with alcohol, but not alcohol. So my uh -huh. dad had, <laughs> I'm young at the time. I don't know what, how, how old I am. But very, very young. And my dad had rubbing alcohol because he shaved. He always oh, wanted shit. to be clean shave. And it was green, though. Oh, uh, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, it's, it's green. It's like, it's not barber side, but it's, uh, what the fuck is it called? It's at the, it's at the store, but it's a green bottle. You yeah. see a dude with a cane and a top hat on it. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's aftershave. It's, it's aftershave. aftershave. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, aftershave. Yeah. All right. And then he had the green yeah. bottle and he walked away or something like that. And I just drunk it. I drunk it. Took that shit to the head. That's why you only know 190 words, bro. You know that now? I was like, well, shit, it's starting to make sense now. Bro, my stomach, I had to go to the hospital. I was, I was messed That's up. That's crazy. That's yeah. aftershave. So it's a really pop popular aftershave that everybody mm -hmm. buys because it's super cheap. Okay. And all the barbers have it. Oh, the bar. Okay, yeah. yeah and so it was clean. Yeah, my dad always clean. Same shape. bottle to this day. It's a green bottle, dude, with the top hat. It's because we sell it at the store. So oh, it's okay. like, I forgot what it's called, though. It's been so many years. I drunk that. It I, I'm not, it don't have a bad taste to it, you know? You're fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> But how are you not dead? This motherfucker over here going to 7 Eleven getting dick pills and drinking fucking barbicide and shit and aftershave. Yeah, how you still alive? Hey, no, that's crazy. Because I have a destiny. No, and then all of a sudden you went. <laughs> you get it, you get it. I'm alive because I got a destination. That's why the, de the destination kept me alive. Bro, that's fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> That's yeah, so funny. Yeah, bro. So when you said the communion and drink, I was like, yeah. My you want to hear something? So remember when I texted you, right? Yeah. So, like, and I told you that, you know, I told the story about so i'm telling the story and my dad's like don't tell anybody's fucking names on the, on yeah. the podcast or whatever because these people are i was like i didn't say anything bad about the dude like i'm, I'm telling you, he's a really good guy yeah. so my dad he freaked the fuck out and he called me and said like yo he's super fucking upset and i'm like what, what? and so i was like hey man can you just take i was like Wait, hold on a second so i called my dad back after i told you like hey can we take that part out called my dad which i hate doing because i don't like taking my words back mm -hmm. and so i called my dad i was like this sounds a little weird i called him back up and i go Dad, what exactly did you not like when I was on the Cutting Weight podcast that I said that made him so mad? 
And he goes, well, he didn't say he was mad. I'm like, don't ever <laughs> fucking talk to me again. What was, it? what was the point? So he said that he came in that day and he was in a bad mood. And then my dad heard the podcast. He goes, oh, he must have heard the podcast. That's why he's in a bad mood. That's what he said. But what he told me was that he was upset because I mentioned his name on the podcast. So he just fucking exaggerated the situation. Oh, That's why I was like, God. hey, don't take it out. Leave okay. it alone. Yeah, exactly. Because I was going to do it. I was like, damn. I was hitting on my guy. He I was like, like no, 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 no. Yeah, Leave it was it like out. for timestamps. I was like, all right. And you didn't say anything bad. I didn't I say anything. I shouted I, him out. Yeah, yeah. I know, and I was like, oh, I want to be him. You yeah. know? <laughs> That was a good dude. Yeah, but let me tell you, the, the guy's name, I'm going to say his name, and I'm going to say positive shit. His name okay. is Lord Tony's Artistic Fingers. And I want to I want to <laughs> shout him out because this dude has been such a good dude to my parents since we were kids, right? You said that. Like, he's always been so fucking good to us. Like, he always sent customers to us, and we always kind of reciprocated the love back. If you're out in the Sacramento area, you need to get your nails done, you need to get shit done, hit up Lord Tony's Artistic Fingers. This dude has been, like, a, a good staple in the neighborhood and to my family. Like, that's that's one of the biggest things, right? Because when you grow up, like there's always like these race relationships, but we always base it on our personal relationships. Yeah. Lord Tony was super nice. He has a niece named uh, Tia. Tia was fucking dope too. She opened up her own spot. Oh, like shit. it's crazy. Because yeah. now I get really sad because I now I think about a time now in about a couple of years, most likely my parents are going to retire. That store is going to be gone, and that's like a huge part of my childhood. Well, well, is anyone going to like take over the store? Or it's hard. I don't think people want to take it over. You know why? Because the store does well because of the relationship my mom has with the neighborhood. Got you. Okay. It's not because yeah. like we're the cleanest, dopest store. We got high tech stuff. Mm -hmm. We do business with the people that we fuck with, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, sometimes people come in. All these people, you know, they watch you. That's weird. And it's like because we don't know you're not part of the neighborhood. I don't know who the fuck you are. Mm -hmm. Like this is a neighborhood store. Mm -hmm. Everybody we've seen in that store grew up from they. I've seen kids from when they were diapers to when they're adults, and they see me when I was in diapers to adults. Mm -hmm. So it's a neighborhood type of thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think like yeah, somebody can come and revamp it. And maybe my parents, they are going to probably sell the store and it'll do decent. But I think the biggest reason why it does well is because my parents are there and the relationship we have with like Tony and, you know, Tia and everybody else, mm -hmm. which kind of makes me sad because it's such a huge part of my life that I know that in a couple of years I won't be able to go back to, which Man. is weird. You so know, do, so how often do you go back though? Um, I mean, since pandemic, I haven't been back in almost a couple of years, but whenever I go back, I go back to the store. We say hi to people and, you know, it feels really good. Like. That neighborhood vibe, I feel like a lot of people are losing. Like you're losing that shit because people stay in the house. They don't really talk to people. And some people didn't understand. They go, yo, all these stores would get jacked, fucked up, robbed, whatever. And sometimes it would happen to somebody would smash a window. But it wasn't people in the neighborhood. It was like some crackhead. It was some fucking crazy person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we were always looked after because we were part of a community. So you're part of a community. The community looks after you. You're not going to fucking jack your lit neighborhood store. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, you, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I have history here. I know this is the neighborhood. I know the people from the store. And damn, I'm making me sad. Yeah, man. It, God, gets, it, gets, it gets a little weird because I, when I was a kid, I used to hate going to that store because I had to work there. Mm -hmm. But then literally half my stories, my jokes, who I am, all came from me going to that store. It was that neighborhood is the reason why I have like a strong connection with like BLM and all this other stuff is because it was a neighborhood that built me up. Half my comedy is from that shit. From the store, yeah. It's from the store. Going yeah. to those barbershops and listening to people roast each other all the time is how I was able to roast people on the internet. Mm. Like that's that's how this works. Like you get a little piece of all the stuff that happens and you it builds this weird character. Yeah. So I remember like when I first was on the internet, right, and people would hear me talk and the top comment was always this right they go why do you talk like a black guy you think you're black it's like nah this is just how people spoke in and my it, neighborhood it was, it was a white guy saying that. No, <laughs> yeah, I know it was. why do you see talking yeah it was like let me tell you some fucking hood motherfuckers they don't talk like me <laughs> yeah, I, know I know a lot of words like hood motherfuckers like they're different different hell yeah you know, know what i mean like yeah. like they 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 fucking it's a different type of thing right yeah. but from what they hear from what i hear is two different things like nobody in my neighborhood had ever said i talk like a black dude they think i talk like a straight arrow guy yeah but when you go out of people who don't know anybody in any type of urban area, they think that this is what you're trying to imitate. Hood, hood dudes or the the worst storytellers. I mean, <laughs> yo, bro. Dog, I try to talk to my <laughs> friends. I'm like, bro. Because again, they, <laughs> if you ever hear a hood dude tell a story like, yeah, we over there and then whoop de whoop. whoop -de <laughs> Bro, whoop de whoop yeah. is a big ass gap they leave out in the story because yeah. they don't feel like explaining everything. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I went over there with uh, Charlie Main and them. Yeah, and they had over old, old girl over there. So we pulled off and we went over there and um, you know over there. But anyway, so I had the whoop de whoop right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the whoop de whoop. Yo, yeah, whoop de whoop was the whoop. shit. Bro, you know, I, I'm not lying. That yeah. whoop de whoop is a lot. I'm like, bro, now I need verbs. I need adjectives. <laughs> I, need, I need subject and predicate agreement. I yeah. need all the subject verb. Bro, the yeah. whoop de whoop and you feel me was like yep. the whole yep. conversation. Hey, yep. real talk. You know, I was coming off. You feel me? And then like, <laughs> yo, like real shit, man. Shit was about to pop off, right? You feel me? And the whole, yo, boy came over here. You feel me? And he was like coming here with that womp womp. Oh, yeah, it's coming <laughs> up here. Yeah. Yep. And we were over here, you know, but that whoop de whoop. And you feel me? I'm like, bro, it's been 17 minutes and I don't know what the Matthew fuck said, happened. But he felt, but he understood. Listen, try, time out. He's so passionate what he's saying. Because check this out. Check this out, bro. I, I mean, Real talk, you feel me? Like, he, he I ain't no hoe, bro. Yeah, so we all were over there with the whoop de whoop. And I was like, bro, nah, I mean, nah, I mean, because nah, bro, you yeah. know I don't play that. You know I don't play that. I'm like, God. Yo, damn. motherfuckers don't yeah. know, though. Yeah. Like, that yeah. that was how half these motherfuckers would yeah. speak. And I just never knew what the fuck was going on. Yeah, bro. And, saying, and all you do is sit there, you're like, yup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go, yeah, yeah. I feel you, man. That's yeah, fucked up, bro. <laughs> Hey, because yeah. you gotta get feedback yeah. and he's like man damn you know what I mean you know, it's a real one in front of me I was like yeah bro you a lot know, of people was... don't understand this stuff though nah, right bro like, it's a world that's that's that real world and like yeah. when we, when, I, when you bring this shit up it, even for me I forget about it because it was just an everyday part of life uh -huh. that's just how people speak and shit right yeah. even when we're talking about like certain man code right yeah like you don't you don't ever say shit behind somebody's back that you don't say to their fucking face off time right and this is like kind of the rules that we live by. Mm. Not everybody lives by these rules. It's just, mm. it's always a little bit weird to me, right? Or mm. sometimes when people take you as being aggressive, when somebody approaches you and then calls you on your shit, it's like, this is how I grew up because I can't do this. I can't say this shit behind your back unless I say it to your face first. So I got to say it to your face first. Yeah, off, off top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's because the, the, that's why I love growing. I, so I spent half my childhood in uh, at Los Angeles and Louisiana. Louisiana, I mean, they it's so bored out there. All they they kill people for fun. God right? damn. Yeah. And LA, you already know it's the game banging out here. Mm. So you don't talk too much. Mm -hmm. out here. They that's what they teach you. Talk, you talk a lot. You yeah. know, and these guys, it's a code. So I know I I, I seen it. I, I can attest, like my the the guys I used to hang with, the you know, when they start when we do start talking about people back, they address them. They're like, bro, what you all this shit you saying? And they, he didn't even get a word. Nah, what I, I was Bob. Like, oh, that was it. Cause you talk too much, mm -hmm. so you, if you don't be prepared to say something, if you're not, you know, you don't say it to someone's face. And I was like, yeah, that's the. A lot of guys forget that code. Yeah, what was yeah. the what was the Mike Tyson quote? He was talking. Everybody have a game plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really what it is. Yeah, man. Bro, but I kind of miss that sometimes. I'm not saying I appreciate violence in that sense, but it's respecting. Yeah, it's like a personal responsibility. Yeah, like you can't say shit like, "Yo, bro, I fuck you up on sight," and then when it comes time to it, like nothing really happens. Off top, yeah, you know, you better be you better be a man of what you say. Be believe in what you say. Don't just put that energy out there because if someone gonna match your energy, and you're like, oh. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Breathing fast. So again, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like when we go back to that topic of haters, a lot of these people too. Most likely, they're not going to say it to your fucking face. I know. And yeah. they they kind of look at the floor when they do, even if they do. And it's like, hey man, why you got to be all negative? Like mm -hmm. you know, like I'm a person just like you. I'll you ain't got to like my shit, but you ain't got to do all that. All time. Hey, before we end the pod, I do want to ask you about this though. Like, so we about to end. Yeah, God, <laughs> that was fun. My legs <laughs> no, out. Hey God. man, we, hey, okay, we keep ahead. going. But I, I do want to ask you about a couple of things, right? Like, so. Because of your situation, I think you might have a really good perspective on this, right? And this is the topic. It's did you hear about the shit that happened with Joe Budden? Oh, about he uh, canceling all his friends, and he was like, "Yo, you in a breach of your contract." Yeah, and I was like, "Mal, Mal, Mall, what?" Rory and Mall, Mall, yeah, yeah. Rory and Mall. Yeah, that shit was kind of weird, right? Because I, like, for me, I don't know how I feel about it per se, right? Yeah. So, like in this situation, you have a guy like Joe Budden. Joe Budden is somebody who has already created a name for himself. The podcast is called Joe Budden's Podcast. He set up the deal. He works the contract mm -hmm. with Spotify. He does all the behind the scenes stuff, right? Rory and Maul have been on the podcast for six years. It's a yeah. very long time. Yeah. Now, from what people are saying, that they get paid pretty well. You know, they're not walking away with small checks. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Budden kind of has this issue where they kind of had an issue of like, they wanted to know, well, what was the deal that you signed with Spotify and what's all these like litigation stuff? And Joe Budden saying, that's none of your business. Like from this situation, this is the Joe Budden podcast. We're friends, but I've hired you. This is the piece that you get. Like you walk away with this paycheck. Now you're kind of stepping over the line like where you're trying to get into my personal issue in business right here. Yeah. And for me, like I, I, I actually understand on a business side what Joe Budden is talking about. I think it sucks because they're actually tight ass friends yeah. and it got 
bad. I know. You know, mm-hmm. and that shit break, breaks my heart too because I listen to the Joe Budding podcast. It's a great podcast. They got great chemistry. Yeah. I love great. that shit. Yeah. And they're kind of going off. And then, dude, when I heard him just going off on Rory and Maul like that, I was, I was a little sad. Well, I don't know if you ever heard this guy named Tax Stone, but mm. he was like a big, he had a Tax Stone podcast. He was like the OG of podcasts and he got locked up. And he just uh, always said, bro, know your value, know your worth. Mm-hmm. Because again, a lot of people don't know it wasn't called Joe Budden Podcast. It was called, uh, uh, I forget the name. It was another title before Joe Budden Podcast. And once he started changing that, he wanted to show like, oh, it's, it's me. It's not a team. It's mm-hmm. me. So I get what he's saying, but also he's, he's, he's kind of being a hypocrite because Lil Uzi Vert, remember, I don't know if you remember that episode yep. where he was like, yo, know everything. No specifics of the contract. No everything these people trying to do. Spot. He, he was oh. preaching. Yeah. And the episode, he was going hard on Lil Uzi Vert. Because Lil Uzi Vert didn't know his deals. He was like, no, the 360 deal. No, all. You know, he's going hard. Oh, so, shit. So, you know, and then R- Roy and Maul just like, hey, bro, you, we want to know. And then he was like, that's none of your business and all that. So, you, you can't. You you contradicting yourself right now. Mm, you, you're I looking see. like a hypocrite. Now, I don't know. I'm not in their situation. I'm not in their shoes, but it's basically, uh, you know, if you don't accept that, then y'all are friends. At the end of the day, business, you, you don't, I, I, I hate when they go like, yo, we don't agree business-wise, but we still cool. No, if, you, if we still cool, you my boy, let's, okay, help my business, like, make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, tell me why, like, uh, I'm having problems with this business-wise. Let's come to an agreement because we're boys. Yeah. You know, and- some people are like, yo, we just said money is everything. So, I mean, I, you can't. Damn, man. Yeah, I didn't even really think about that. I didn't know that shit. That's crazy, man. What? Oh, yeah. We was going hard cut, on Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can stat, fact check and all that. Y'all yeah, he got to. Because that's, that's, that makes it hard for Joe Button's case, too, right? Like, you're you're giving people advice about how to handle your business. And these are also your constituents, your peers, and your friends. And they kind of go and take your advice. And they go, oh, yeah. you are right. Hey, man. Like, before we kind of get into bed about everything, like, you started this podcast deal. You know, we've been a part of this for six years. So what's that whole deal about? He goes, stay in your fucking lane. Stay in your lane. I'm <laughs> like, like wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Isn't that your advice? Mm, I could kind of see it like that too. But, yeah. But yeah. also Charlemagne the God called it. I don't know if you saw that clip where it's resurfacing that he was on their podcast mm-hmm. and he was like, man, I just feel like Joe Budden going to cut y'all. And he was like, y'all not as tight as y'all seem. And all. yeah, it's a oh, clip. Oh shit, it's, Charlamagne it's the God called that yeah, shit. Yeah, called it. He was like, because I feel like Joe, because he called it out. He, I fucking forget. What's the name before the Joe Button podcast? Yeah. But it was a name yeah. with all them on there. And yeah. I'm like, damn. It's so, but again, he called it. And he was like, bro, you know, he's just like, yo, I see signs. Like Joe is just like, you know, he's like academics. He can see like whoever he buddy up with that makes his benefits towards him. And he ruins everything. And he's like, damn. And Joe Button does ruin everything. Damn, that's crazy. That's, that's a clip. It's a clip that's right there. Go see it. It's Charlamagne, Charlamagne the guy must be loving himself right yeah, now. Yeah, he's killing the fuck is like I, I fucking called it. I yeah. didn't say anything, but I yeah. did. I said everything, dude. Uh huh. Exactly. That's fucking crazy. So, so he, it was a clip of like two minutes of just him, just like nah, because I feel like on Joe Budden's podcast, it's like man, I feel like you know you're gonna cut these guys out eventually. Damn, man. Said it to their face, and then Roy and Ma was like, "Yep, yep." And he's like behind the scenes, he's like he's gonna ruin everything. Yeah, and then Joe, and then Joe, but like, oh, you're not about to get these guys. You're not about to get. It. Here you go with your bullshit. And he was like, nah, I, I seriously, like, yo, look how you treat, you know, everyone around you. And then academics, and he's like, look, this is a all y'all three, y'all three started the podcast, and then you named it. You cut the name. You said the Joe Button Podcast. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You took yeah, all yeah. ownership. So yeah, damn. That's some deep shit. Well, yeah. you know what? Now I got a different perspective on it. <laughs> That's some not, other shit. Yeah, but he goes hard. He went hard on Lil Uzi Vert. Like yeah, not can't. knowing what you're signing, not knowing the contract, not knowing the, the logistics, the whatever you're putting your name on. And again, I'm like, bro, why are you going hard? And people, when you sign that dotted line, that means that, that's the final answer. Like yeah, you agree else. to all that, that shit, bullshit or whatever the terms are. And, then, and you got to take that. And you, bro, you, you know, some people read it. Some people are a little Uzi verse and some people are like, you know, Nipsey. Like, nah, man, I'm not putting my name on that. Nah, that's stupid. I mean, what Nipsey's unique, man. That <laughs> that dude, he, yeah. he said, fuck it, I'll do my yeah. own thing. I got yeah. my own label. I sign yeah. my own people. So I'm own people. And I, I know from so a lot of guys, they they listen to lyri- Nipsey lyrics or come out to their, you know, Nipsey songs, but they don't live what he's talking about. They yeah. want to rap it, 
but they don't live what he's saying. Now it's more than rap than what it, it's a message. Man, when Nipsey passed away, like it's it's crazy because I actually didn't know too much about Nipsey. I just knew a few tracks that I really liked, right? Which ones? Wait, so wait. I mean, so grinding all my life, you know, like that's all that other shit. That's your art. Anytime we work out, you got some Nipsey in the background, of right? Of course. So that's why for me, like people, oh, you didn't post about Nipsey. It's like, cause I feel fake. Like I, I, I knew a couple of tracks from Nipsey mm -hmm. and it was some just later shit. And I thought Nipsey was dope. I knew about what he was doing with his community yeah. and all this other stuff. But yeah. you know, when I started reading more and more about him, it was, it was, it was kind of crazy how, how much of control of his life he was. Like he was an independent artist. I mean, he was doing his own thing. Yeah. And I didn't know because of how big of a name he had on the West coast. Right. He, he's like one of those dudes that was doing like that OG, like fucking gangster rap shit, but it was commercialized and it was good it was fucking great. music. And, and you know, it was, it was so real. He was real. Mm -hmm. Like when he died, I had some people in, in, in uh, Washington DC, like real gangsters was just crying. Yeah. Crying. I'm like, damn bro. He was like, tell me it ain't true. Cause they was like, we don't know the video. He was like, bro, did he really die? I was like, man. Nah. And it was like, they had like, I was couldn't have connect with the sixties. I was like, bro, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, man, don't say it ain't true, man. You know, you got real ears to ears. Not over there. Yeah. Not over leaving like, people alone, man. I'm not. not. <laughs> but again, I was, it affected me. They just, and like, dude just started crying. He was like, bro, it's been a weird, like, few years, man. Nipsey passes away. Kobe, Kobe yeah. man, when Kobe passed away, I teared up. Yeah. And I'm I, I, I teared up on both. I'm a, I'm a Sacramento Kings fan, too, right? So, uh -huh. you know, that whole. Torch job. Yeah. And hold on a second, man. He you know, I, don't know about, I don't know about torch Jason right? Williams and Chris Weber, and y'all have uh, Vladdy D. But I like, he Hold on a second. Shaq and Kobe. And again, I was a Laker fan because my dad growing up uh, was, you know, from Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. I used to watch those games late at night in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I used to see them just Shaq have his way with Chris. Hold Weber. on a second. There was a little Diva. controversy with the ref ref calls and shit oh, like that. Oh, my God. Against. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. But it was one of the most exciting parts of my life. Yeah. Right. And I hated Kobe, but I respected him so much because he was so undeniably fucking good right yeah, yeah. and because for my age gap i kind of caught jordan at the tail end of his career kobe that's all was, you needed yeah kobe was my jordan yeah kobe was your jordan yeah, yeah. kobe yeah. was my jordan right seriously but I, I fucking hated him though because he was fucking destroying my team. killing y'all yeah nah, LeBron but every James. time i saw him on the baseline he would do his fade and yeah. somehow it would go in go over or just like it's it was insane every, man he, he's a he and you know what? he took every game like it's his last game and i love that about him when he talked about how uh, Phil Jackson would talk about how every game was over and he would shoot like a thousand shots after the game is done. Every game. That blows my mind, man. He doesn't have to do all that. Like, oh. This is who he is. He has his money. He has like, yo, he already probably scored 40. And just the fact that he probably was like, man, I missed that one shot. Let he's like a thousand. He's the guy of hard work because there's a lot of people out there that, yeah, you could talk about his luck, like his father was in the NBA, everything else like that. But that's not the reason why that, that made him great. It's because he, the, his love for the game and his dedication to the sport, right? Because you could look at the same thing. Jordan has a son too. Where's he at? He was supposed to, but he didn't love the sport as much as Jordan did. Mm -hmm. He didn't love the sport like, like Kobe does. Mm -hmm. And if he did and he put the dedication in, who's to say that he wouldn't have been a great himself? Mm -hmm. So when I look at Kobe, he's that guy for me. It's like, look at this guy. We could keep saying to ourselves when we do stuff, we go, oh, we're not as, we'll never be as good as that. But did you ever work as hard as that person? Mm -hmm. You know, and it goes back to that destination. Kobe had a destination. Had a destination. He wanted to be the best. Yeah, I'm going to lace this fucking hand with rings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, exactly. It, listen, all five. And hey, that was easy. But I remember my favorite Kobe. A lot of people say, oh, hard work. But it takes a lot. You want to see. Like, hard work says you're like yeah I work hard that's easy but do you really yeah you know what I mean if you hear like yo Kobe scored 40 what are you doing right now out there shooting a thousand jumpers like god damn he just scored yeah off this one miss and my favorite commercial that I like teared up on of course you know deer basketball but it was that commercial where that Nike commercial where it goes down mm. I hated you you remember that name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For a while now. Yeah. <laughs> and then Paul Pierce come out of there, just that you be good. And I was yeah. like, yo, bro, that shit was so funny. Yeah. My favorite Kobe commercial is the one with Kanye, dude. He's like, Kanye? Yeah, did you see that shit? Nah. What what Kanye, where he's giving like this Apple speech, it's Kobe, right? Uh -huh. and he's giving this speech, he goes, do more. And then Kanye was like, Bob, I'm, I'm the greatest rapper alive. He goes, more what the fuck is he talking about <laughs> you know? but yeah. it's like kobe's funniest he was a good actor yes you know yes he was a fucking great he could 
His speeches were fucking amazing. Yes. Smart as fuck. Spoke multiple oh, languages. You better make me cry, bro. Everything not, about him is what you want in a leader in a sport. We're and not, not going to get Kobe Hall of Fame speech. Hey, man. Dude, right here. This is why Kobe's up here, man. Bro, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a constant reminder. All these, like these things. Bruce Lee, fucking Mike, Mike Tyson. Tyson. And Kobe Bryant, man, these are all greats at what they did. And they, yeah. they left a legacy behind, mm -hmm. right? And this is what I really do appreciate. And then your legacy doesn't have to be as big as these guys. But no. like we said before, and we're going to keep saying it again, mm -hmm. all of them had a destination and a goal. Correct. And, and look at that. Look at, look at what they've accomplished, man. Yeah. What are you trying to leave behind? Because at the end of the day, we're all going to die one day. Yep. What are you trying to leave? Like, oh, when they say about this guy, oh, this, well, he was, you know, what are, what are they going to say about you? Yeah. And that's what, that's... Very that that's where my principle and values come from. Like, man, I want people to say, "Yo, oh, Malik is a man. His word, he stand up." And again, I if I'm not, call me out on it. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, well, man, it's dope having you in today. That <sighs> shit was a, that fucking went by fast. I was like, God damn, what the hell? Yeah, is it an hour? He's like, man, <laughs> I met my advertising quota. <laughs> nah, man, it's just an hour and twenty, man. We we went pretty long, bro. That was we, good. We did damn. Right. Yeah, man. Shit, right. But you know, Malik, where can they find you? They can find me on the Cutting Way podcast. Uh, we, you know, show the work and toe tapping over there. They can also find me on IG, Malik Bazil. They can find me on Twitter, Malik Bazil. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for the future. I can't wait. Cool. Let's get it, man. We'll see y'all next time. Every Thursday and Sundays, Genius Brain Podcast. And peace.